Hi, I'm Joe Hashem and I'm the artistic director and co-founder of KO Pack, the Actor Studio and Penang Pack. Um, well, KO Pack is the biggest performing arts center that we have in Malaysia. In terms of what we do, we are also a production company where we produce our own, our own plays, um, a, a venue where we lease the place out, we, we rent the studios out, we rent uh, the theatres out to people who want to come and perform. Uh, yeah, they are the sorts of things that we do. I suppose K.O. Pack is special because of, I believe, some of the best performing arts practitioners who are involved in, in theatre. There are many wonderful performing arts practitioners who are involved in other theatre companies, but we have a, a number of them together here. Uh, plus we also have an academy. You know, we have an academy here which caters for about 1,000 students a year uh, and these uh, students range in age from 3 to 103 so it's uh, that I think makes it pretty special. Uh, there are many programs uh, apart from the fact that we do a lot of theatre we present a lot of plays. Uh, we also have three orchestras. We have a symphony orchestra. We have a, a symphonic band. Uh, we have a junior orchestra. We also have T4YP, which is Theatre for Young People. And that's been going for many, many years now. Uh, it's become iconic. Uh, Theatre for Young People is a program which we set up because we made a conscious decision to concentrate on young people. and. What we do there, we, we invite young people to come and audition and they must be between the ages of 18 and 25. Uh, and they come and audition and every year we accept maybe 10, 11, 12, up to about 15 or 16. And they spend six months of concentrated theatre work where they have a series of masterclasses so that's another thing that we do here. So we, we, are, we do productions, we're involved in education, and we're involved in nurturing the performing arts. That's one of the, one of the things that we have for a very long time uh, made a top priority, is nurturing the performing arts. Uh, it was very dangerously close to us having to close our doors. For many months during the pandemic, uh, we had to close our doors totally because we couldn't allow people to come in. There were no performances, there were no productions, there was no theatre for young people, there was no academy, there was nothing. So therefore, for a period of about three and a half months, we had no money coming in and you don't have money coming in, it's almost financial ruin. But thankfully our, our um, sponsors stayed with us, have uh, supported us. The other thing is that we also did a lot of online work. You know, we went online, we went on to Facebook and YouTube uh, and that, that kept us going for a while, but there was no funds coming in at all. Uh, so we, we had to, at one stage, uh, our, our staff, we had to virtually cut their salaries in half. When the MCO became the RMCO, we started allowing our staff to come in three days a week, from 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and then as things seemed to get better, we extended it to five days a week. Uh, so it affected us enormously. It, uh, mainly financially, but fortunately we have survived and we are still surviving, uh, but I, I don't know how long we'll be able to survive for. 
if things don't get better. I suppose it was a couple of things that all add up to the one thing. Because of the fact that we couldn't have audiences and we couldn't put on any productions, it was like something that none of us had ever experienced before. We felt that, what are we doing here if we can't do theatre? I mean, this is a wonderful venue. We have wonderful theatres and yet we can't do anything, you know? But the worst thing about COVID was the financial aspect of it. I mean, I think that goes without saying. I think every, every industry, every industry was hit very, very badly. But because we are the performing arts and because the performing arts always tend to be the lowest cab off the rank, uh, we were hit very bad. The thing that concerned me personally most was whether we were going to survive. Plus, I worried about some of our staff. I worried about a lot of our freelancers because they were not earning any money. And, and that was a big concern. When a person has a family to raise, if he's not earning that monthly salary, it was very worrying for us. That was my biggest concern, I think. The, the only thing that we could do to fix the problem was to dig into our own savings and to make sure that our staff were looked after. Uh, because our staff are our most important asset, you know. If we didn't have our staff, we couldn't continue. So we had to look after our staff. Uh, and that caused us, that forced us to find the wherewithal to be able to support our staff. And it was most worrying. It was a very stressful time for quite a while there. Uh, the stress now is easing a little bit. Yeah. Actually, the pandemic is not over yet. <laughs> yeah. But for the future, we just, we just plan to keep on doing what we're doing to produce theatre that, that uh, audiences will want to come and see. I personally am, am, am venturing into an area that I have not ventured into before. For instance, my next major production is going to be in Mandarin. Uh, it's going to be a streetcar named Desire in, in Mandarin. So we will continue to produce the plays that we have been producing, but at the same time, we are also recording them on video so that we can, we, we can also play them to audiences that who cannot come to the theatre. So I think that's the biggest change. I think what the pandemic has done has awakened us and made us realise that we have to think differently. We must think differently. Otherwise, theatre will not survive. Survival. My biggest goal is survival. Okay, to all of you people watching this, uh, the way you can support us and make, ensure that we are continuous and we continue to survive is to come out to KLPAC, support theatre, tell your students about theatre, tell them to come and watch theatre, even if you have to pay for them. If they don't have enough money, get them the money so they can buy tickets to come and watch a show. That's all I have to say. <laughs>